Hi, I'm Tony Van Veen, CEO of Discmakers, coming to you today from the Orange Room, one of three rooms of our Sound Lab Mastering Studios. Today, I want to discuss a topic that is sure to spark a lot of passionate debate. I want to talk sound quality. Specifically, I want to try to answer this question. Does your music on vinyl sound better than it does on CD? Now, I want to start by stating that the preferences for the sound of any one format over another is completely personal. If you love the sound of vinyl better than the sound of a CD, or vice versa, who am I to argue with what you like? Because of this highly personal nature of each of our preferences, I'm going to try as much as possible to stick to the facts rather than opinions. And I want to start with this caveat. I am not an audio engineer or even an audio expert, but I do know enough to be dangerous about analog and digital audio technology. So let's dive in, shall we? In the debate of CD sound versus vinyl, the first topic I want to address is dynamic range. What is dynamic range, you ask? Well, very simply put, it's the difference in volume between the quietest part of the audio and the loudest part of the audio on the recording. The CD, which is a digital medium, has a wide dynamic range of as much as 96 decibels, which is a higher dynamic range than that of a vinyl record. This is partly driven by the fact that a vinyl record has a so-called noise floor, basically when the level of the recording gets so low that it can get lost in the surface noise that is inherent in every record. This noise floor limits how low the levels of a quiet piece of music can be and still be pleasant to listen to on the record. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the noise floor, the surface noise that creates the noise floor is basically the sound you can hear when your stylus is playing in the lead-in or the lead-out groove of the record. I'm sure you've noticed that, unlike a CD, a vinyl record is not completely quiet before, in between, and after the songs play, right? Well, that noise floor can actually get higher as a record ages and wears out. And the ticks and pops that come with an older record, while they can be charming, will appear to narrow the dynamic range of a record even more. So, while a well-pressed record can have an impressive dynamic range, it does not compare to the dynamic range of a CD. Now, before you wag your finger at me and tell me CD masters nowadays are so loud because of the compression and the limiting that their dynamic range is actually quite narrow, I will tell you yes, you are 100% correct. But that is done by choice. Today's record labels and mastering studios have trained a generation of music fans to prefer music that is loud from start to finish. However, the available dynamic range of a CD, think a classical piece that has really quiet and really loud parts, is actually quite large. Next up, since I mentioned compression and loudness, let's talk about volume. Here again, the CD is technically superior. As a digital format, there is no downside to having the CD as loud as the medium can handle for the full 74 minutes or so of music that fits onto a CD. With a vinyl record, a louder record means your grooves have to be deeper and they need to be farther apart. That means that a record can only have the maximum volume if the side of your LP is no longer than 18 or maybe 19 minutes of music. If you have over 19, 20 minutes of music on one side, the mastering engineer is going to have to start making adjustments in how they cut the lacquers because a longer program on the same 12 inch diameter means the record needs to accommodate more grooves. Well, well, it needs a longer groove, of course. That means less space between the grooves, which means the grooves need to be shallower, which means lower volume. Therefore, for most album mastering, the mastering engineer will lower the overall levels somewhat. Which, apropos to my first point about dynamic range, lowers your dynamic range for the record. So, when comparing the formats, the CD is able to more consistently provide higher volume than the vinyl format. What about bass? Well, funny you should ask, Tony. Some of today's music hip-hop and raps especially, 
includes some super low bass sounds. You've heard it, right? Well, vinyl cannot come close to replicating some of those super deep bass sounds that you can hear in digital recordings. The first priority of any mastering engineer is to make sure that the record will play without skipping. More bass requires, again, deeper grooves and grooves that jiggle more. A record with a ton of bass means more of a risk that the grooves will touch each other, which can lead to your stylus skipping. Because a record needs to play on any turntable a listener might possibly use, vinyl mastering generally involves making some compromises in how the record sounds, which frequently includes some compression, some limiting, and some EQ to reduce low frequencies a bit. As you can see here in this video, our mastering engineers look at the grooves of every record they cut through a microscope to make sure that they don't touch or partially overlap, known as a crosscut, which will cause a record to skip, so that we can ensure playability of every record that we ship. Okay, so a CD has louder volume, quieter parts, and more bass than vinyl. So what about this analog warmth we keep hearing about? Ah, another great question. The whole concept of analog warmth comes from the fact that vinyl is an analog medium and that analog sound waves are smooth, as opposed to the ones and zeros in digital music, which can't fully replicate the smoothness of an analog sound wave. And according to some folks, you can actually hear the difference in a way that makes the vinyl record sound warmer than a CD. Is analog warmth real? Probably, though I'll have to admit that I personally have never been able to hear it. But then again, I'm by no means one of those golden ears who can hear such nuance. So let's look at the facts. For starters, the digital sampling rate of a CD of 44.1 kilohertz means that there are 44,100 samples per second of any piece of audio. And that, my friend, is plenty enough to make a natural sounding audio wave. Perhaps more importantly, most LPs currently released are recorded digitally to start. If you believe in the analog warmth argument, that only works if your whole process is analog, starting with multi-tracking and mixing down on open reel analog tape. Now, I don't remember when we last got an open reel master for an album here at Disc Makers, although we can still accept them. Fact is that pretty much every studio today is digital. So if you want your digital recording to sound as analog as possible for pressing on vinyl, start with the highest possible sample rate. A 24-bit 96 kilohertz sampling rate is more than twice as high as the standard for CDs and will yield the best results for vinyl cutting. We will certainly also cut lacquers from a 16-bit 44 1 kilohertz master, and they sound fine, but you probably don't want to count on that analog warmth. And finally, believe it or not, we occasionally get clients sending us MP3 masters and, well, that's where we draw the line. We will ask those clients to send in a higher resolution recording because it makes no sense to cut a record from a compressed MP3 file. Next up, let's quickly touch on the player environment. Technically, this is not a matter of the format so much, but the player does have the ability to impact the sound of the medium when you are listening to it what you'll find is that there is a much wider difference in playback quality based on the player when we're talking vinyl compared to when we're talking CD player. A well-pressed record played on an entry-level Crossley turntable will not sound as good as one played on an audiophile turntable. There are so many factors at play here. The quality of the stylus cartridge, the tone arm, the motor that drives the RPM of the turntable, the electronics. Many people today play their music on lower priced turntables, and that does not help your records sound their best. There is a large difference in quality between low-end and high-end turntables. With CD players, there is much less of a quality difference. While there are certainly differences in the quality of the DA converters, the digital to analog converters, between low-end and high-end CD players, the audible differences between a lower-end and a high-end CD player are much less than between a lower-end and a high-end turntable. Okay, so we've covered dynamic range, volume, bass, analog warmth, and player performance. The last topic I want to discuss is 
wear, W-E-A-R, wear. Since there is physical contact between the stylus and the groove, a record gradually wears out the more you play it. This impacts the sound of the record and the dynamic range. Add in some dust particles attracted to the static and you have some pops and ticks. You may love them because you love vinyl, but in a perfect listening environment, they're not supposed to be there. The CD, of course, if handled properly, does not experience wear and tear like a vinyl record. It will sound as good the 1,000th time that you play it as it did the first time you played it. So, to wrap up this video, if we look purely at the technical aspects, CDs sound better than records. There you have it. You just can't argue the facts. And if you were to go to recording and mastering forums online, you would find that most mastering and recording engineers would confirm this. That doesn't mean that a record can't sound better to you. The sound we prefer, each of us, is extremely personal. A well-recorded, well-mastered record, if properly cared for and played on good equipment, can sound amazing. Add in the aesthetics of the record, the ritual of handling the record and carefully dropping the stylus and admiring that 12 inch by 12 inch album art. It is clear why records are the physical medium of choice for many a music fan. And regardless of the technical aspects, who am I to argue that? I hope you found this helpful. I look forward to seeing you next time.